Landfill gas. Uh, we've had a landfill gas facility out of the Douglas County landfill for several years. We're producing about seven megawatts out of that. By the way, methane is a, this is terrible English, but a much worse uh, polluter in terms of greenhouse gases. And by capturing that methane and burning it in engines to produce electricity, we reduce the output of that methane dramatically. That's helpful. Ainsworth, which is kind of in north central Nebraska, Nebraska Public Power District, uh, built a uh, wind farm out there about three and a half years ago, four years ago. Uh, we take about uh, 10 megawatts out of that wind farm. Uh, so some of the energy you're using today is coming from our little wind turbine at Valley and coming out of Ainsworth. Also on March 15th of this year, uh, a new wind farm was uh, developed and uh, commercially went commercially available on March 15th. It's called the uh, Elkhorn Ridge, which is in Bloomfield, uh, which again is in north central Nebraska. That wind farm produces a total of about 80 megawatts. That 80 megawatts out of that OBBD is taking about 25. Creighton University, we're partnering with Creighton University to do a commercial scale solar project. Uh, hopefully by the end of the year when you drive by Creighton it'll become very visible that that project is there. We want to see can we really integrate effectively commercial scale solar into our generation mix. We see wind and solar in terms of, of a renewable resource they kind of complement each other because in Nebraska wind tends to only blow at night and I know everybody says the wind always blows at my house but typically wind ten, tends to blow at night. Also the best winds are in north central Nebraska. And by the way, they only blow about 40% of the time on average. So 60% of the time you still have to have another resource to keep the lights on. Solar marries very nicely though with our peak. Our peak in this part of the country is in the summer. And so we see the solar as being a distributed model for us where we have lots of solar panels around the area. So at 2 o'clock in the afternoon on a July day when it's really hot and everybody's using a lot of energy, we want to be able to, to go to that solar resource and have us help us get through that hump. And then at night, the wind, it'll help us provide energy for you at night. So they make a very nice marriage. In addition to that, we currently have a request for a proposal out on the street uh, where we're going to increase the amount of wind that uh, OPBD is going to use for uh, generation to help us meet that 10% goal that we have. Let's talk a little bit about energy efficiency. Where are we with, with the energy efficiency picture? Think of all the businesses that either you're in or that you go to. Let's take McDonald's. Do you suppose McDonald's sits around and goes, okay guys, how many less hamburgers can we sell this week? Can we work on that? I want you to sell 20% less hamburgers. My guess is they probably don't do that. But we as a utility, remember that 50 megawatt goal to reduce the amount of energy that you're using? That's exactly what we're doing. Instead of reducing the number of hamburgers we sell, we're trying to reduce the amount of energy that you use so we can harvest that energy, so we can use that energy to help bolster our economy by using energy we didn't have to build a new power plant for to attract new industry to our area. Somebody once said, the cheapest kilowatt that anybody can produce is one you save. So why not do that? We'll save that kilowatt over here, and when Business ABC comes to Omaha and creates jobs for us, that we can use that kilowatt that we've already saved, and we don't have to spend money to produce a new one. So along those lines, in December of this year, we rolled out about 31 programs that will be put in place over the next three years. They're aimed at helping you become more energy efficient, more energy efficient than you ever have in the past. Lighting's a huge one. I use the example of this room because it was a great one last week of what not to do, and this week's a pretty good example of what you can do. Simply by upgrading your lighting, making changes in the way you use your lighting, can, if you're a residential customer, can save you maybe 10% of your energy. If you're a commercial customer, that jumps up to 20 or 30%. And it's a pretty easy one to do. How many people in here have compact fluorescents, at least one in your home? Pretty good. 
So for those of you that didn't raise your hand, go to Walmart tonight. For about six bucks, you can buy a three pack and try the compact fluorescent. I guarantee you it's not the compact fluorescent of the late 80s, early 90s. Much better technology. They look just like an incandescent bulb and they use 75% less energy. Same output. Energy Star Homes, OPBD just got uh, an award for our efforts in helping builders do more Energy Star Homes in our area. Energy Star Homes are homes that are more efficient overall for both gas, water, and electric, by the way. Continuous commissioning, that's a commercial product that we have that we help our customers commission their, their businesses so they can use energy more efficiently. On average, we achieve about 20 to 40 percent reduction in energy. Again, gas and electric both. Real-time monitoring, that's an experiment that we're doing. Think about it when you go and buy something. Do you ever buy something without looking at the price? Do you ever go to the gas station and not want to know how much it's costing you or how much you spent when you put in the fuel tank? Our product is one of those products you have no idea what it costs when you're using it or how much you're using. Real-time monitoring is going to allow us to provide that information to you, how much you're using and what is it costing, and hopefully give you information so you can make wise energy decisions in your use of our product. So we have an experiment out there of about 150 customers that we had started last, late last summer, early fall. We're going to carry that for an, about another six months or so and see if customers' habits can be shaped by providing them with knowledge. Low-income homeowners' energy efficiency. Uh, OPBD was, was instrumental in uh, helping the legislature look toward a bill called LB101 last year. That bill provides funding by the utility and taking some money from sales tax, marrying it together, and helping the people that have the least ability to make a change in their energy usage, the low-income people, make those changes so they can have some of the benefits of those that are fortunate enough to be able to afford to do ourselves. Air conditioning controls, uh, you'll see a pilot come out on that, both for residential and commercial, sometime in the next couple years where we will come out and not what we did 25 years ago when we shut your air conditioner off for a long time and it got real hot and everybody goes, this sucks, I'm getting out of here. What we'll do is on a very small basis, we will come in on maybe five minute increments, shut your air conditioner down, you won't know it's down, and when we got tens of thousands of those out there, we can actually start shaping and shifting the load. So again, we can bring that demand down. And it's a very simple way to do it and yet, allows you to have the same level of comfort that you're used to. And then leverage national, state and national uh, stimulus funds. As you know, there's a gazillion billion, I guess everything's in trillions now, but there's a lot of money out there. We're working with the uh, uh, Energy Department in the uh, state of Nebraska. We're working with some federal agencies and trying to figure out how can we leverage those funds to help us move faster toward this energy efficiency piece.